Hi guys, this is Korak from Edureka. Welcome to today's session on Google Cloud Machine Learning. Now before we get started with the topic at hand, let's discuss today's agenda first. The first thing we talk about is what is machine learning, followed by why use Google Cloud for machine learning. Then we talk about the different Google Cloud Platform machine learning services that are available, the Google Learning ML features that they give us, the steps involved in applied ML, and then there's a demo on deployment of different AML models in Google Cloud. And finally, we end it with a use case on Spotify. Also, if you do like our videos, please do subscribe to the Eureka channel. And if you're looking for a GCP certification, please do check out the link in the comments below. So let's get started. The first thing we talk about is what is machine learning. So suppose you have a picture of a dog and a cat, right? So how does a computer understand the difference between which is which? Right? How can the computer tell which is a dog, which is a cat? So to do that, you have to do certain processes. The first thing you do is you collect the images and process them using computer vision, which is again a machine learning service that is there. So computer vision will basically understand what kind of image that you are processing. Right? Then you convert all the images in the same format so it's easier for your computer to understand. And finally, you transform them into numbers for algorithms to learn. Right. So the main aim for you to teach a computer what a certain thing is so that it can imitate you. Right. So machine learning is a branch of AI which focuses on the data and algorithms to imitate the way that humans learn, gradually improving the accuracy. Right. So machine learning is always data driven and the main aim is to imitate human learning techniques as best as possible. And there is the opportunity for continuous improvement for the accuracy. Right. So it is always possible to create a perfectly copying model. So this is what machine learning is. Then we talk about why use Google Cloud for machine learning. So the basic reason why people use Google Cloud for machine learning is because it improves efficiency. It is suitable because it has pre-trained models, right? So it directly saves the user a lot of time as well as provides the necessary resources required for the integration of the model with other services. So Google Cloud ML is one of these tools that is used for production and deployment of machine learning models. Then we talk about spam detection. Now when it comes to spam detection, we talk about the fact that Google Cloud has the ability to detect spamming, right? So it crops out or removes anything which is unnecessary with respect to the trained model. Then we talk about customer segmentation and accurate predictions. So the most faced problem today that we have is the enterprise company in customer segmentation. So different enterprise teams provide relevant data such as website visitors, lead generation and all of that. And the result is basically a big segmentation of what people want and that is how you divide customer based on their needs. So that's what customer segmentation is all about. Then we talk about the different services that Google Cloud Machine Learning has. So of the many services that Google Cloud and machine learning has, we're going to discuss a few of them here. The first one we talk about is your Cloud Auto ML. Now the Cloud Auto ML will basically enable developers with limited ML expertise to train high quality models. Followed by, we talk about the Google Cloud text to speech. So text to speech or speech to text is another service which basically enables developers to generate human like speech. A very good example is your Google Translate. So when you basically give a certain input, let's say type in a certain word, Google Translate will say that word in a certain human-like voice format. So basically for a certain given text, you will get a certain voice output or for a certain voice output, you'll get a certain text. That is what Google Text-to-Speech does. And the aim is to generate as much as human-like voices as possible, right? Next up, we have the Cloud Vision API. Now, the Cloud Vision API allows developers to easily integrate image detection features within applications. For example, let's say the optical character recognition. Now, optical character recognition is something which helps you detect text in images. So, if there is, let's say, if there's an image and it says no parking, so you uh, Google Cloud Vision will basically help you detect that text and print out no parking over there because of its capabilities for optical character recognition. Then we talk about the natural language processing API. So the cloud natural language API is an interface to several other NLP models which are working on bigger data sets, right? 
then we talk about dialogue flow so dialogue flow is basically a development tool for creating chatbots so the main aim for creating chatbots in a website is so that you make the user interface much more interactive than it already is and if the users of that website have concerns they can directly converse with the chatbot so it makes the entire user experience much more seamless and better then we talk about the vertex ai which is one of the most important cloud ml services provided by google cloud so vertex ai is basically an environment for scientists to experiment deploy and manage the models that they create right then we talk about the cloud machine learning engine now the cloud machine learning engine is a managed google infrastructure for training and serving large scale models right so it is used mostly on larger training models unlike auto ml and finally we talk about the tensorflow enterprise now tensorflow enterprise performs the enterprise grade support performance and managed services for your workloads right so this is basically the services that google cloud provides we'll talk about some more a bit later so next up we talk about google cloud machine learning features so some of the features that google cloud machine learning offers us are the capability to train models using distributed clusters now what this means is that a distributed training cluster will have the workload to train a model which is split up into different processes right so these small processes which take up a part of the workload are called worker nodes and these worker nodes work in parallel so as to speed up the process of model training right next up we talk about the fact that google cloud ml allows you to build ml models with custom tooling now what this means is that it enables developers with limited machine learning expertise to train high quality models specific to their business needs and even if you aren't really not someone who is into ai it will help you build high quality trained models with ease right and finally we talk about the enterprise level compute infrastructure that google cloud machine learning provides and this is basically something where you can see that the ml services have self allocated resources and high end compute infrastructure to make the deployment of the model much more easier right then we talk about the steps involved in applied machine learning so let's suppose you want to train your own machine learning model what do you do the first thing you do is you gather the data that you need to feed your model right and after you gather the data you basically structure it in such a way so that it's easier for your model to understand so you prepare it the next thing and one of the most important things is choosing a model for your deployment right a model that you can train so what you have to do here after this is evaluate the different configurations that are available and choose what is best for your model and what you want according to your business needs after that you go to parameter tuning where you can again fine tune your configurations for your model so that you get your best possible prediction because the aim is to get the highest accuracy right and the final part is the prediction part so the prediction part basically tells us how accurate our machine learning model is or how well we have predicted it now this is basically the higher the prediction the better the learning capability of your model so these are the different steps in applied ml so now we come to the demo which is managing document ai processes using python so document ai is a service provided by google cloud platform which is basically a technology that uses nlp and machine learning to train computers to simulate human review of documents so basically what document ai does is it extracts information from documents in digital or print form right it is able to accurately identify text characters and images as well in different languages so this is basically what document ai is used for now what we will be doing here is we will be creating processes and managing those processes using python right so let's get started so the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have a project created on Google Cloud Platform and on that project you have Document AI enabled. Now once you have Document AI enabled, you can just go to the Cloud Shell and do the following. So once you've basically enabled Document AI, you can just first thing you do is make a directory called Document Processes. So once you've made the directory, you will have to export your project ID and your Google application credentials with that as well. And once you've done that, make sure that you make a new service account. Here, the service account's name is Document AI Processor Code Lab, right? 
So once you create the service account, you can see that the service account has been created right here. So the next thing you do is you change the IAM policy and you add the editor access. So you need editor access to manage your processes that you create. So once you've done that, it'll update the IAM policy. And as you can see, this is all being updated. So once after you've created your service account and you've create, made the changes to the IAM policies so that you have edited access, you have to create and download a JSON key, service account key that you have. So this is basically the service account key that I have and it's being downloaded. And after that, I'm just checking for the entire path of my service account. And this is the entire path of my service account, which shows me the project ID, the private key and the public key as well, right? After this, what you do is you create a virtual environment on Cloud Shell. And once you've created a Python virtual environment, what you need to do is that you need to activate it using so cnv bin slash activate. So now your virtual environment has been created and activated. So once you've done that, since you're using document AI, you need to basically install this, which is the cloud document AI tabulate. Now what document AI tablet does is it basically makes your data that you have in the document look much prettier when you have to print it, right? So now that you have your document AI tablet installed, what you have to do is create a Python session with the command IPython. Now you've created a Python session, which is basically an interpreter for Python. And for that, you'll have to put all your functions and all your code in this IPython file, right? After you've basically downloaded the document AI tabulate file, you'll see that it's been installed. Now what you have to do is get a Python interpreter. Now you can log into this Python interpreter by the command IPython, right? After which you can just put in your functions inside that IPython file. So you have the code. Now the code basically shows you the kind of processors you have and the processor type and basically you have to print the processors that you have. So if you do that, you'll see that you'll have something like this. Let's go down here. As you can see, this is basically all the processors that we have. And this being shown using a tabular format using document AI, right? So we'll try something else out as well. Let's just see the number of processors that we have here has been typed out to be 34. Now this is all because that we want to know the number of processors that are present. So this is basically nothing but listing the Python and processor types that you have. So these are basically the processes that was already present. Now let's just try creating our own process and basically print that as well. So what you see here is a data frame where we're creating a processor and displaying it as well. And this is the same. So what we're doing is we're creating another data frame, which is the tabular data function, which will show us our new processors printed in the tabular state. And if you run this command, this is what you see that these two processors have already been created and enabled, right? After this, there's another function, which is basically showing us there's another processor and we'll have to get that processor if it exists, right? So let's just go back here. Yeah. So let's just check out if a certain processor is already there existing. For example, in this function, we'll basically go check out if the OCR processor exists, right? And we'll have to go check it out and display the name of the processor and the OCR name as well, right? So the type of processor that we have is the OCR processor. This is the processor that we created and it's called document OCR and it's enabled. So this is a different command that you can use for getting the processors that you've created, right? So basically it also shows you the version of the projects that you've created and the processes that you've created as well, right? So let's try out something else now. So the next thing we're going to try is we're going to try and analyze the document in this document. It's basically called form.pdf, right? So we'll have to just, right? So if you go here, you'll see that the form.pdf file has been downloaded and basically when you ls into it you'll see the files that are there which is the form.pdf the json and the python environment right now there's a function called process file which will basically process your document and analyze it and it'll print the path of the file and the document as well so basically after that 
what you have to do is print the file so once you print the file this is what you see that it's a health intake form and this is the data that you have in there right so this is not in tabular format because we did not mention it but if you want to you can and after this you'll have to check out the fields in the document that you have so to do that we have another function called print form fields which will print the tabular data form fields and do that so this is basically the fields that you will select and once you select those fields that you want and print the same document you'll see that the entire part where you wanted it to be tabulated and shown has been shown here like this right so there are 17 fields and this is what you have as your document so the document ai can read and show you tabular data which is not redundant so now you're going to update the processor state after this now to basically update the processor state what you need to do is delete the processor right so you will have to disable the processor first so to disable the processor this is the function for disabling the processor and this is also a function for enabling as well so if you want to enable it from disabling you can check that out what you need to do is you need to print out all the enabled processors here and once you've done you can just delete them because this is a function which shows you how to delete the processors that you've already created. Before this, we saw how to create the processor. We saw how to get fields from a certain document. We saw how to analyze the document. We also saw how to enable and disable the processors, which is extremely important before you delete it, right? And this final part is showing us how to basically delete them. So once a file is deleted, we are done and you've cleaned up all the data that you've already used. Right? So you don't want to keep instances or processors keeping on running because so if you exceed the free tier limit, it will basically cost you money. Right, So you don't want to do that. So make sure you always delete your instances and processors. Right? So with that, we come to the end of the demo. Finally, we come to the use case, which is Spotify. Now, Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service all across the world. And... What you can see here is that Spotify have actually turned their data insights much faster. Now, how has this happened? Spotify uses their Hadoop cluster and then they change their Hadoop cluster into a big query solution. Now, what this does is it allows you to not only give data insights as well, but also have around 740 active users on BigQuery, right? So that's around 25% of the employees at Spotify, which is a pretty huge percentage. So not only this, but this also gives direct and real-time insights to the artists so that they can access the live real-time streaming statistics for their songs, right? So this is how Spotify has used Google Cloud in their functionality. And this is why I think Spotify is still going to be one of the leading music streaming companies for years to come. And Google Cloud has been integrated into literally every aspect of our life. And... With that, I end today's session. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!